it's Louisa Lamb. And only one. And welcome to the Love Discovery and Dim Dim Sum Podcast. Well, everyone, this is the quarantine edition. Um, A lot in the world has changed since we last spoke. A lot. I think on our last episode, we were talking about all the shutdowns and schools were just beginning to shut down. We are now homeschooling our daughter, which is a new experience, to say the least. Wow, yes. we're like like we're finishing each other's sentences. Says. Do you know? Do it's, you know it's oh, oh. <laughs> because our anniversary is coming up. Oh yeah, so now I have an excuse. Um, I did not plan anything for our anniversary because uh, everything shut down. Oh, I tried that's really. Your, that's your excuse. I tried now. really, really hard. I had all oh, these those reservations. reservations. Yeah, yeah they, <laughs> and they shut me down. I canceled all the canceled reservations. Canceled every single romantic thing I could possibly think of. Sorry, blame oh. it on Corona. Got it. So we don't get to celebrate our twelfth anniversary. Oh, was it, is it twelve? <laughs> Are you okay. serious? Is it twelve? Is it it really? is seriously twelve. Do you you not you do not know? I totally. I was gonna say it was like ten or eleven. You know, this is this is what happens um, it, when coronavirus is even around. Is like you still forget dates. I still blame it on the virus. <laughs> Everybody's bra- blaming everything on the virus. In fact, um, they're blaming a lot of Chinese and people that look Chinese. Uh, so anybody uh. that looks remotely Asian, unfortunately, is getting the receiving end of the brunt of a lot of things that are going on. And I know it's a really stressful time for people. It definitely is. But I honestly don't think it should be an excuse why people will be racist. Hmm. I mean, some people is would argue... Is ever a good time for No, that? it's never a good time. <laughs> and and some people would argue, like, well, they were already racist. It's like, well, they probably were already leaning there. But I feel like... Now they're just more vocal Now they're just vocal. It. <laughs> you know, it's well, true. Well, not even vocal, just like... They're physically up. They're just they're just rude about it. Um, I mean, we've experienced it on our end before coronavirus of people saying really insensitive, racially tinged comments like that they would never say to somebody that was not Asian, uh, very insulting things. And um, I've been on the, I've been in this weird loop where now that I'm at home, I'm spending a lot more time on social media. And uh, you may have known. Too. I know I've been on Twitter, <laughs> and some of you listening may have seen seen some of the tweets I've been tweeting. And so there's now kind of this famous photo of the Mulan poster that was defaced. Oh, you mean the Wuhan poster? Yeah, the Wuhan. <laughs> Somebody changed it to say "Made in Wuhan" and put this mask on Mulan and made, said it was toxic, and it just was very offensive. So my friend is actually the one that posted the photo, and then I ended up tweeting about it, and it kind of went viral. In fact, a couple of news stations have covered the the story, and and. And so it's kind of gotten a lot of traction. And then one of her friends, Tai Ma, who's in the movie, mm-hmm. one of the actors, he plays Mulan's dad, yep. was recently kind of a victim of, he, he went to a grocery store and somebody actually yelled at him like, you should be quarantined. <laughs> but they didn't do that to anybody that was white around. I mean, yeah. we're all quarantined for the record, everyone. Depend, you know, regardless of what color you are, we are all under quarantine. Now, that means we're all staying home. You know, we're all American citizens or at least, you know, resident aliens or some people here. And I mean, Ty, Ty's been an American citizen forever. OK, <laughs> so he grew up here. Um, we were born here. Um, and so what we want to do on this podcast, especially, is is help people, especially people that are non-Asian, Tell the differences between Chinese, because even like people that live here for so long, your family has been in this country for generations. Yep. Many generations. generations. And yet people can't tell the, like, they just automatically think you were born overseas or, you know, you're not, you haven't been in this country that long. I mean, I, and people don't even know the differences between necessarily Chinese or Japanese and others. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a friend who went to the park just to get some exercise and somebody yelled out, Hey, Mr. Miyagi. Now he's not even Japanese. He's right? not Japanese. He's Chinese American. Um, I mean, and that one wasn't as cruel or vicious as some of the other ones. One of our other friends, are, you know, he was walking through, our friend Jeff, he was walking through a, a, a grocery store, too. A lot of stuff, because nobody's going out anywhere else. So all the, like, racial incidents are happening at grocery stores. Somebody just said, F you. You know, I'm not going to say that because it's a clean, just for no reason. Hmm. Because he was Chinese. <laughs> Right. They're not saying that to anybody else that's that's white. Um, and and in even the most egregious, um, besides some of the people getting harassed and beat up on subways, one of the other egregious um, stories I read about was a Chinese-American woman that went to a grocery store in San Jose. And all of a sudden, the cashier, when she was checking out her groceries, started like yelling at her, like, go back to China. You shouldn't be here. This is all your fault. And just started like cussing her out. 
And it's like, this is a store. And then nobody, none of the employees did anything about this. I mean, and then it was almost starting wow. to turn into a mob scene. And, and this hasn't even gotten that much coverage in the news. So uh, what we really want to do here is try to present some solutions. So hopefully, um, even if you're not Asian, you can help us by helping people distinguish the fact that there's a lot of differences, even within the Chinese community, right? Okay. Um, in fact, we also made a video that people can check That's out. That's right. Yeah. Um, we do did our own little version of I Will Survive, mm -hmm. um, a little PSA, but the, the part that's really cool about this is our little daughter is giving our story about her family and why you shouldn't be harming people because mm -hmm. they just happen to look Chinese. Or afraid of us. Afraid of us. So you can check that out on our uh, podcast.loveanddiscovery.com website. We'll also be posting it on our Facebook page and on uh, my Larissa Lamb Music YouTube page. Okay, so first off, people don't understand that there's a difference between Chinese, being Chinese ethnically, right? Mm -hmm. And being from China, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's some people that are German American, like or, are. Or even distinguishing the Chinese government from being. Exactly. A Chinese person. Right, because the Chinese government is a communist country, right? And so people don't even know the differences. It's like here, it's like we're all Americans, right? Yeah. But we have. We obviously have Republicans, we have Democrats, and just because whoever happens to be in office doesn't mean that everybody in the country thinks the same way, right? Yeah. And just because you may not like our president now, it doesn't mean you should hate all other Americans, Americans right? Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of, like, half the Americans don't like our president, right? right. Or maybe more, you know? <laughs> Probably more. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so it's the same way where you can't confuse Chinese people living in China with the Chinese government. Right. At the same time, you can't confuse people Chinese living here or in the UK because I've been reading about incidents not just here, like Chinese in Europe, in UK, Australia have also gotten racial slurs thrown yep. at them, and beat, and up. beat up in yep. Sing even in Singapore. There's a lot of Chinese in Singapore. So that's that's even odder when the Chinese is the ethnic majority. Otter. Is that, is that odder? Odder? Is that is that more otter? odd? Odd more odd. You English Can majors I have some out otter there? Pops? You English majors out there, you can tell us what's the proper grammar. No, um, so isn't isn't that even more odd that in a country that is predominantly majority ethnic Chinese, that Chinese people are getting beat up and blamed? And these are mainland Chinese. I think it's because they're from mainland. They're not Chinese that were born in Singapore. And so there's a lot of hate among. It's like Asian on Asian hate. That's even worse, oh, right? Um, and so we want to help you distinguish this. Okay, so that's that's one thing. All right. So if we're saying don't hate on Chinese Americans, okay, don't hate on Asian Americans, we're not endorsing the Chinese government. Because people are like, how dare you stand up? Like, these are Chinese people that are saying this. Oh, how yeah. dare you stand up for the Chinese Communist government? Do you know what they did? They have human rights violations. Like, no, no, no. We are not standing up for the Chinese government when we're saying, like, we don't want people to call it the Chinese virus. We are wanting to stand up for Chinese Americans when you say... The, not just Chinese Americans, Asian Americans. Asian Americans. Which is even more different than a Chinese American because there's so many facets of Asian Americans. Right, because as we mentioned, our other friend, you've been... You know, you've been asked that. Like in our movie, there's a scene where you said kids beat up on you because they thought you knew karate. Right. And then you say because I'm Chinese. Right. But you said like karate's Japanese. <laughs> Japanese. Right. And, and they not can't tell the difference. and not Chinese. And there's Thai. There's Cambodian. There's Vietnamese. There's a whole wide range of other countries besides China that people are Asian, right? Yeah. Okay, so get that straight. Just like in a Latin American countries, right, there is... They're not Latin, all Mexican. There's not all... There's Central America, there's South America, not everybody's Mexican. There's so... It's the same thing, you know? So we're trying to educate everybody out here, all right? Yeah. There's differences between different Asians. Okay, so now we're, here's where it gets complicated, all right? And this is where this is where I also feel like we're, we're big advocates of American history, you know, mm -hmm. education, because we feel like a lot of people don't know our history in this country. Yeah. People just don't know world history, too. Okay? That's and true. I'll, That's and even I'm, worse. And I'm the first one to say I don't know world history. I uh, don't know world politics. Okay, so like when Who's he, the first president of Antarctica? Everybody, because it's, it's everybody in the uh, country that owns Antarctica. Can I elect one of my penguins? You know? I guess so. <laughs> Happy feet, the penguin. Um, so here's a weird thing that happened. So I was talking about that tweet I was sending out about that Mulan poster. So what I didn't realize is I was kind of making a point like, okay, we shouldn't be doing things to vandalize Asian Americans and making racial con statements. People that were pro-democracy Hong Kong were jumping all over that and saying that actually
just deserves it. And and I was like, whoa, that was not the point here. I was like, this is totally not about China and Hong Kong. Yeah, because... I don't think the guy who spray painted that poster of Mulan was like, yay, Hong Kong. No, they would have <laughs> said a message like that. And so there's like... They don't like you Hong Kong people either. There's all these <laughs> tweets and all these messages. And here's the thing that's... Again, it's like this Asian on Asian thing, which is weird. It's like, it's like all these Hong Kong people hating on this actress. And I'll be frank. I mean, I'm sure she does a lovely job in the movie. We, nobody's seen the movie. They're like, boycott Mulan. Well, like, gee, guys, you got your wish, you know. <laughs> um, but it's it's not going to come out to, the, you know, who knows when at this point. But, um, you know, I don't even, most people in America don't know this actress. They yeah. don't know her. Do you even know her nope. name? I no, I and we're Chinese American, right? So I only know her name because I've, ha I've seen it in the news because of this poster. But... Aside from that, like, seriously, nobody in this country knows who she is, don't know her politics. Americans don't care. So just let's yeah. step the record straight. I probably wouldn't recognize her if she walked down the street either. Exactly. Well, are you saying all Asians look alike? I'm just saying I haven't looked at her <laughs> enough. <laughs> so anyway, so China and Hong Kong have this weird thing going on. Okay, and then add on Taiwan. Taiwan and China have this weird dynamic going on. We're talking about mainland China, okay? Mm -hmm. So people who are from Taiwan don't want anything to do with China too. Okay. And we, we're not going to go into the long story, how you have actually been insulted by somebody yeah, <laughs> Taiwanese that's, that's who, who uh, didn't realize you it's were China ethically, but we were all American. So, so again, this gets complicated. All right. So, so just so, so do you know, there's other people in other countries down and don't even like the Chinese <laughs> in mainland China. Okay. But Chinese Americans, okay. We're different. All right. Very. And as I mentioned before, there are Chinese all over the world, ethnic Chinese, just like, you know, Giselle Bunchen, you know, Tom Brady's wife, oh. supermodel. Yeah. Okay. Um, she's Chinese. No, she's not Chinese, <laughs> but like ethnically, I think she's German. But she's oh. Brazilian, oh. nationality wise. Okay. Everyone always thinks of her as Brazilian. Right. Well, there's a lot of, uh, you know, like Giannis, the Greek freak um, in basketball, NBA. He was, M you know, MVP player last year. Okay. He's Greek nationally. Right. But his family is and, and forgive me, I forgot the country that he's from, but his family is actually from a country from Africa. You know, oh. just like my parents. Now, your, your family is, is a very different story than mine. So my parents were born in China, okay? Then they went to Hong Kong after the Communist Revolution, and then they came to the United States, okay? Uh -huh. So it's like that, where my parents were born in China, but I was born here. I'm an American. So Giannis was born in Greece, but his parents were born in Africa. So, like, there's a lot of stories like that. Um, and, uh, you know, bringing up the point with your family... Um, your family has been in this country for five, well, six, six. generations, if you count our daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Six generations. And just to use an example, I mean, our, our president, President Trump, his paternal grandfather was a German Im immigrant. So that makes him only the third generation. That makes him a Nazi. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. I did not say that. Well, sorry. You know, no, but see, these are the dangerous things. I mean, you joke about that, but that's exactly like the illogical things. It's like just because just because you're German doesn't mean you're a Nazi, right? Right. Just because you're Chinese doesn't mean you have the COVID-19 virus or that you are a communist, right? Um, in fact, in World War II, this is exactly why people ended up getting rounded up, right? The Japanese, because of Pearl Harbor, everybody that was ethnically Japanese didn't matter if they were born in this country and how many generations they were they were rounded up and put in internment camps. Yeah, you know? sad. Now, they also did round up German and Italians as well, but by far much fewer numbers because they mainly targeted foreign-born, you know, because there was a lot of Italians and Germans that were in this country for many generations, yet the Japanese, it didn't matter how many generations they were in, they were all rounded up. So there were 120,000 Japanese that were put in internment camps versus 11,500-ish Germans, yet the German population was in the... You know, there was a, like over six, seven, eight million German ancestry people in here. So that's such a small percentage. So we have a problem in our country where I think by default, we think of Asians as foreigners. Don't you agree? I think most people do. Like if somebody comes up to you, like you, you have, yep. you share the story about the airport. Like one time somebody thought you didn't speak English, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot about that. I should, I shouldn't forget about that. Cause it was kind of weird. Uh, but they started talking like in English in front of my face saying, dang, I wish I knew how to speak Chinese. <laughs> and then I was like, I, so do I. I wish I knew how to speak it too. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see the shocked look on these white people's faces. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, Chinese is a hard language, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but, but here's some truth, right? And, and your automatic 
bias. This is why we call like racial bias. Like I, I'll just, we'll use kind of these terms because I know sometimes people say, well, that's racist. Well, you know what? I, I don't want to say that that's racist. I want to say that there's just racial bias. Okay. Because I don't think they meant any harm by thinking that, but we are just conditioned in our country culturally to think if you have an Asian face, you're the default is like, you're not going to speak English. And then when you do speak English with an American accent, they're Dang, like, whoa, you speak, you speak English. English good. What? <laughs> And I've had that happen to me. I remember being in the middle of an Ohio when I used to sing with my old singing group and I had somebody, a really sweet lady come up to me and she was like, oh, you're English. You speak it so well. You don't have an accent. And I was like, thank you. You know, yeah. and I did know. She have, did she have a British accent? She did not. Like, thank you. You sound like you don't have a German or a Russian accent. I know that's how you should, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should say that to somebody. Um, but, you know, seriously, though, like, I don't want to say, like, she was a racist. Like, she was being really, like, genuine and sincere. And I think at the time she said there was only two Japanese, like, you know, exchange students in their whole little small town in the middle of Ohio. Um, but there definitely is racial bias or, like, just lack of education. Um, and so... Like, if you look at somebody who's black, right, in this country, mm -hmm. like, you don't automatically think, like, oh, my gosh, they're going to sound you like... Yeah, exactly. You don't think they're going to sound from, like, Senegal or something, right? Like, you just think they're going to speak regular English, right? Because yeah. they're black. And it's if they speak with an accent, like, oh, they're from another country. Whereas, again, you see somebody that's Asian, and you automatically think, like, oh, they're from China? Especially an older Asian. An older just, Asian. They just assume all old Asians are not from here. Yes, exactly. And we have lots of friends that are older Asians, you know, we're talking mature adults, right? Yeah, um, that who, have been here for, their their parents were from here. <laughs> they have been here for generations and generations, and so I think we need to help people start to change that mindset where the default isn't that we are the perpetual foreigner, um, because obviously we don't go up to, like, you know, people that are white and thinking, expecting them to be like, Ooh, your English is so good. You know, I thought you were going to be have a Swedish accent, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, and then there's also been waves of different immigrants, right? We're talking about the different generations. And so, yes, there are people that are newer immigrants. And there are ones that are like your family who have been in this country for a very long time. There is a difference. And honestly, um, we know there's been a lot of just rise. And again, people just hurling insults, saying terrible things or, or, or hurting people that are Asian because they're wrongfully blaming them for COVID-19. And, um, you know, some people are like, oh, well, you know, they're just words. Like, why are you whining about it? I really hate when people say that. So you're saying, like, it's OK that somebody should be insulted because of the race or what they look like? I mean, you know, like, oh, you call everybody a racist. I'm like, no, maybe they're not racist. They're just mean. Should we not call out people that are mean? I mean, I understand when it was initially called that because they didn't know how else to describe it because of its origination in China. You're talking about people calling it the Chinese, the Chinese virus. virus, right. But as soon as people started seeing the, Im the, the impact of that, right, the consequences of calling that, and they saw violence and all that stuff, it's like, shouldn't that be a mark of why it shouldn't be called that? Even if... You did used to call that thing the Spanish flu. You you didn't have social media back in you know 1912 or whatever that was when they had the Spanish flu to make a huge impact to start beating up and you know hurting Spanish people. P people just didn't do that when they called it the Spanish flu. But today we live in an environment where we have all this social media. We have many ways to twist the way we call people and say things, and then there's there's a consequence to that. So. Uh, People aren't thinking that. They're, they're comparing, oh, well, this flu came from this place. Ebola came from Africa. But, like, people didn't go out beating up black people just because of Ebola, you know, back then. Yeah, well, and, and here's the thing. And to, to our, our president's credit, and, you know, I know some people don't like to give him credit, um, you know, he did finally tweet out that we, that, that we need to protect Asian Americans. So, and, I, and hopefully he will stop calling it, you know, Chinese virus from here on out because we've had a lot of advocacy groups. And, shoot, he has, like, you know, Elaine Chow is in his cabinet. Right. She's, depart, you know, the Secretary of Transportation. Yeah, yeah, behind the scenes, it's Elaine Chow smacking him in the face. Yeah, I, I hope so. And then <laughs> our friend, Congresswoman Judy Chu, um, you know, has been doing a lot of interviews, and she and the the and the Asian Pacific American Caucus has sent a letters um, out to him, and and finally, I think this started to get through that this is not healthy, you know, for the the Asian Americans in our country, and we need to make that distinction. Um, and honestly, what what we're afraid of is we don't want it to get to the point because people are like, oh, well, it's not that huge of a problem if it's just a few people. 
Well, do you want it to be a big problem? I mean, everything that you do is like for prevention, right? Like they, the statistics now are like one in seven people smoke. Okay. So should, does, does that mean we should stop doing like, you know, uh, healthy lung and healthy, you know, living and, and same, you know, lung cancer uh, ads because like, oh, well, only like one in seven people smoke. So we should stop encouraging people to stop smoking now. Like, right. <laughs> like, yeah. like we shouldn't stop all those ads because we don't really need it. It's really not that drugs, like not that many people do that drugs in the grand population, right. you know, but like, should we stop like, you know, say no to drug campaigns, <laughs> you know, I think, I think this is all part of Thanos's plan. Thanos. Yeah, oh yeah. Thanos f- is like... Get rid of 50% of the population. Yeah. And he's only... So you're saying Thanos is the one that released the coronavirus. Yeah. He, I mean, he targeted 50%, but he's only getting two. So he, he's a little <laughs> off, but you know, we're freaking out over 2%. So you're talking the about the 2% population. of population that is actually dying from COVID-19. Oh, it's even less of the entire population of the world, probably. But. Yeah, so in, in certain parts, yeah, I Thanos think Thanos is not doing a Thanos, good job. Thanos. Blame Thanos. Okay. Um, but I think what we want to make sure doesn't happen is there was a case um, called the Vincent Chin murder, right? Yeah. Um, which yeah, a, lot a lot of people, lot of people don't, about. don't know about oh, yeah. it because we don't always cover it in our, in our U.S. history books, but there was a guy named Vincent Chin um, back in the 80s, and it, this, was in, this happened that's not that long ago, the 80s. Not that long ago. Some of you were alive back then. Um, <laughs> and he was, it was the night before his, I think, his wedding. He was at like, right. a bachelor party. And he was in Detroit. And this is when a lot of uh, manufacturing for autos, uh, cars, were going overseas. This is when Japan was starting to get, rise Japan up. Japan was doing well with and, Toyota and all that, yeah. And so a lot of the factories um, were kind of getting, the American factories were kind of getting, you know, they beat too by well. the, the Japanese car companies. Yeah. So there was a lot of xenophobia towards the Japanese, um, you know, as if World War II wasn't good enough, and Japanese Americans. Again, Vincent Chin was not even Japanese, right. and so some guys beat him up and because left him for tell dead because the they couldn't tell for dead, and they ended up getting off. They didn't actually they go to jail. Yeah. Um, and so Maybe that for was like a day. Um, that was an incredible a, a miscarriage of justice there. You guys think it's fun and games. It's like, oh, well, it's just insults. It's nothing. But you know what? Some of these people that are getting beat up, like this homeless man that was Chinese in, in San Francisco, it's lucky he got hospitalized. He didn't die. Right. Or some other people in New York that are getting the brunt of some of these assaults. You can joke about it with no one dies. But when someone dies, we don't want that to happen. So I think that's why we are really passionate about kind of helping people make this distinction because, you know, again, we live in a society where sometimes it's mob mentality or you're you're just in the heated moment. Look, we understand, guys, like it's frustrating to be cooped up. Your whole life is ruined. I mean, I had a friend who just got married and I had to watch her. I was like almost in tears. I was watching her father daughter dance like online. She posted on YouTube because she couldn't have her wedding reception, Aww. you know, and um, I mean, they were happy and they're trying to make the most of it. But like people's lives and their their livelihood, their jobs are gone. We get it. It's a really rough time. But don't lash out at the wrong people, okay? This is definitely a situation where a disease, no one can prevent it. You know, we, we, we can't control it. You know, So to blame somebody erroneously for it is it, not going to do you any good. And there are a lot of Americans that have always been Americans of Asian descent, not even of Chinese descent, that are working and researching here in America to try to stop this thing. And they're in our medical facilities trying to tend to people on the front lines, you know, and, and they're they're in with people in the hospital being, you know, contaminated every single minute of their jobs. And people can't tell the difference. They're just like, oh, you're the one who brought it here? I was like, no, he's the one who's trying to save us here. Yeah, well, and that is also the sad thing is a friend of mine on Facebook actually posted, he's a surgeon, and somebody, one of the patients, actually refused to have him do surgery on him because he was Asian. And, and again, that is just, it, it breaks my heart because, again, he, why would he be different than anybody that was non-Asian to treat that patient? Right. But because of people's irrational fears and uneducated um, you know, part of their life, not knowing the differences, um, the fear just kind of takes over all rationale. And so we just want you to know that, again, um, we're not trying to make fun of people who don't know the differences between Asians, okay? Like, we, 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 we don't, because we understand it. this is complicated. As we were even explaining with the China versus Hong Kong versus Taiwan, you didn't, Baldwin, even know about the differences. Nope. You thought we were just all Chinese, too. I was like, you're my brother. And they were like, no, we ain't. <laughs> <laughs> And then you started to get like, you know, and again, it, it goes to politics and we're not going to get into the whole, whole thing. But if you are interested in finding out more of that, Google it. OK, because, you know, it has to do with 
Because Google knows everything. It has everything. a little bit to do with com communism <laughs> in 1949 and a bunch of people that went to Taiwan who left the country. And then, you know, again, it's complicated. Um, so, and, and, you know, the Chinese Exclusion Act, Act that um, in 1882 that happened, that was a result of, again, people fearing the Chinese after they came here, worked on the railroads, and people were fearing that they were stealing their jobs by they, staying here. And they were brought here. They were brought here because they needed the labor. And, you know, in the same way, you know, there's, a, like you said, there are people working on the front lines as medical professionals, as research, researchers and scientists that are here, um, that are American. There are some from all around the world, from all countries, you know, not just Asian countries. And so we need our best and brightest talent here to hopefully not be assaulted <laughs> in these things. And and again, the Exclusion Act was another cautionary tale of, of people and, and, the, and the effects of it. Because really, some people are like, okay, well, they killed the immigration, they, they stopped Chinese from coming, except for people that were under exemptions. But what people don't talk about, too, is some of the biggest um, race, racial crimes were against the Asians right. that we don't hear about. The largest mass lynching happened here in Los Angeles. Yep. 18 to 20 Chinese were hung right here near Chinatown. Right. Okay. And people don't know that. Yes, there were a lot of lynchings across the country for but those who are African American. But not in mass. But the largest mass were all at once happened actually to the Chinese. And they were driven out of villages all across different you know, states. They basically were in uh, Wyoming. They were in Idaho. In Colorado. And Colorado. And their houses were set on fire. They were driven out. In many cases, they were mass murdered. And again, People don't hear about this. So it also annoys me when people say, like, well, nothing bad has ever happened to you. Okay, maybe hmm. not personally. Now, I, I'm i very grateful that we don't live in the 1800s anymore. I'm very <laughs> grateful yeah. that we don't live in the 1940s and 50s anymore. Yeah. And thank you to Dr. Martin Luther King and others who have brought to us a place where things are so much better than they were before. So I do want to give that perspective. However... Things can turn on a dime, too, as part of, like, I didn't fear going out two months ago. But even now, like, one of our friends, her husband's stuck in New Jersey, and we're like, oh, why do, you know, he can't get a flight out of New Jersey to come to California, um, because things are really bad on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, why doesn't he rent a car and come over? And he, he, she's like, I just don't feel safe for him. He's a Chinese-American man driving across country, because who knows what could happen to him. In the middle of the country. Right. People don't know what a difference is between a... Chinese guy and a yeah, American and this is guy. again, we're not living in a Jim Crow America anymore. Yes, the KKK still exists, but we're you know people are not doing lynch mobs right now, or at least they weren't. But it could happen <laughs> again. We're having these discussions because we don't want it to happen. So if we're if you feel like the Asian community is overreacting, it's because we've seen what history has done. And so we want to learn from those lessons of history so it doesn't happen. So, I mean, I hope you take that attitude is the reason we're raising on these issue is so that it doesn't happen. Because it's just like with the COVID-19 thing, right? People are like, oh my gosh, this is like, some people are like, it's too extreme. It's like, why are we shutting everything down? Well, we're shutting everything down so that it's not the worst case scenario, right? Like if we shut everything down and it's like, yay, only like 10 people died, like that's a victory, right? Because you, if we hadn't shut everything down, then, you know, 10 million people might've died. But that's not the case, unfortunately, here. There are more and more cases coming up. And so this is the kind of the new reality. Kind of one last thing before we kind of go. As we're talking about just this, these racially insensitive things, you know, I just also want you to, to bear in mind, like, as you're talking to people, if you're Asian, try not to do it with that defensiveness and kind of the anger that they're showing that you. That is so hard. <laughs> no, it, it really is. And I've been battling trolls online. You know me. You're like, Larissa, what are you doing? I just did some, I, I just did it. And, and, and I'll be frank, I'm actually fairly decent at doing it. Now, it doesn't mean I win the argument, but I do shut them down or even elicit like a thank you or... <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, because somebody could say something really insulting to me for no reason or like, you know, or call me like saying, oh, you're playing the race card or, you know, like blah, blah, blah. Or even insulting my friends. I've, I've had to come to defense of a lot of my friends on, on some posts. And I will actually try to do it with kindness. I will, one, look for something like you have in common with them. You know, like, okay, maybe they don't agree that there's violence against Asians, but can you, can we agree that violence is bad? Right. Right. Okay. Violence is bad. So can we just agree that we shouldn't have any type of violence towards anybody, whether whatever the motivation is? And sometimes if it's whether they're white or they're black, it's like, would you agree that it's not right to hurt somebody that's white or black either? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. And wish them well, honestly, because we are in a health crisis. Wish them good health. 
Okay. Don't be like, I wish you die of like COVID-19. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to win hearts and minds. Okay. So what we have to do as an Asian community too, is win hearts and mind with kindness. Okay. Because people are not going to see your point of view. If you keep yelling at them the same way they're yelling at you. And you, if you're accusing them of being just racist, okay. You can say like, you know, stop. I mean, obviously you want to call out. This is Larissa looking straight at me when she's <laughs> saying this. Because I had a friend that asked me, he was like, you know, and he's a white guy, and, he, and several white people are, like, messaging me. He's like, hey, are you okay? Has anyone done anything to you yet? You know, like, how do you feel about this stuff, right? And then, and, I, and my comment was, well, I'm not happy about it, but, like, I'm not scared because if they do it in front of my face, I'm probably going to take them out. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, my, you don't want to mess with Baldwin. And then my friend was like, yeah, that's true, but, like, then he's then 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 they start posting stuff like, hey, we should stop the hate, you know. I have Asian friends, Asian American friends that are that are cool people, and then their white friends, like this is a white guy saying it, their white friends will like be like, stop being so pandering to those Chinese people. I'm like, and I was like, oh, let me meet some of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> But but don't do what I'm doing is what Larissa is saying. <laughs> Be kind. And um, well, and it's hard because especially if you're on social media, okay. I mean, obviously somebody says something to your face, and and you know we had this happen to us last year. We were at the bowling alley. We, I think we might have told the oh. story. And honestly, that was the first time in my whole life where I understood what it was like to be in, like, the 1940s, 50s Jim Crow South because I felt like somebody said, why don't you go out the back door and not the front door? Because somebody made a, a racial comment, like, you know, oh, they're Chinese because they don't know how to walk. And I was like, what does that have to do? Like, we were just trying to avoid their, like, they're, they're, these guy, this guy was, like, playing pool. I'm like, we didn't do anything. And, and it's like, why why would you say that to us? And it was such a humiliating experience. And so, it, it, you know, if you're wondering, like... Larissa held me back. <laughs> I did. If, if our daughter wasn't with us, I think Baldwin would have popped him right in the face. Because I, I really did. Um, <laughs> I have confronted him, though. Yeah, I mean, we he basically bald and went off on our history in America. So, like, arm yourself with, like, about the history in America. And, and honestly, wishing them good health. People don't know what to do. Somebody just thanked me when I just went off on them on, like, they need to be kinder to others. Like, for instance, like, our pastor always says, like, stop spending so much time tearing people down and spend more time building people up. Right? That's a good advice. And it's a great advice. So I exactly said that. And the person's like, uh... Thank you, but uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they said something much milder after that. You know, where I got into debates with people on Twitter, and every single time, like, somebody was like, how come you, like, you're not, you're not grateful for this, this, this? And I was like, you know what? You know, thank you for pointing that out, and blah, 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 blah. I think we can all do better. I hope you wish you well, and I hope you spend your time being able to be, uh, you know, kinder to people around you. Okay. People do not know because they're like, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be nice. I'm not going to love people more. I mean, they're normally not going to retort you that way. There's every once in a while you get a jerk. But like for the most part, people who are like hating on, on the social media, like they don't know what to do with you if you say something nice to them and compliment them or like wish them well. They really don't. And, and hopefully it starts changing their minds a little bit. Like, oh, hey, that Asian's actually okay. You know, <laughs> like you really, I mean, it's just like with friends. Like no one's going to hear your message if they hate you. You know, you really have to have friends and make friends. And I and I see a lot of our, our fellow Asian friends who are just writing off all people that are not Asian, whether it's black <laughs> or white. And that's another issue because we've also seen in the news some of the people are not just white that are doing this. Some of them are, you know, African-American. Some of them might be Latino that are, are hurling these insults at people. And, you know, especially in our movie, Far East, Deep South, like every time I want to say, like, you just need to watch your movie, which is, is like a terrible response because no one can watch our movie because <laughs> all our film festivals got canceled. Um, uh, that's another story. And that's another story. They're all postponed, uh, but we're working on it. Um, but in the meantime, people can watch your trailer. But I keep commenting, you know, we have that story where there's this long history that people don't know about, especially the younger generations, both Asian and African Americans, where, you know, your grandfather um, lent credit to the African American customers that he had when they couldn't afford to, to during the Great Depression. Um, also like, because they were sharecroppers, they only got paid once or twice a year. And we have people in the black community who talked about how a lot of the grocery stores that were Chinese owned would loan them credit because white banks wouldn't. Yeah. And at the same, and at the same time, it was blacks that were willing to allow us, you know, the Chinese to have businesses to, to let them have a business that thrive because white people wouldn't 
give them any business. Right, and 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 the Chinese, so the Chinese needed the customers, and we couldn't live anywhere else. We had to live in the black communities. We weren't allowed in the white communities and as we well. We partnered together, so. And so there's a very, uh, there's this history that we want more people to know, and that's why we're trying to influence the education system. Look, racism isn't going to be solved overnight. We understand that, and I hope everybody, you know, understands that. And instead of complaining about it, too, what we need to do is really think long term, which is why we are actively, you know, working in the in the, in the education. education system, especially with the documentary. Somebody actually called me out on Twitter. They're like, your complaint, like when I posted the tweet, and they're like, all you're doing is just complaining and not doing anything about it. This is somebody Asian. And I was like, you don't know me. You don't know how much I'm doing behind the scenes. And the thing is, I'm not doing this because it's glamorous, right? You don't become famous and you don't make a lot of money making documentaries about Asians and history. Let yeah, me just because, tell you. Yeah, and, and trying to get licensing from schools. <laughs> Let me just tell you, all right? That is not why we, that's not why we did it. We are doing it because we are passionate about trying to change the course of history in a sense of our country because we have a daughter she's six years old and i've heard stories she doesn't understand any of this she doesn't know but she goes to a mandarin immersion school a lot of the kids are asian and we've heard stories of bullying and and kids making fun of each other because ha 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 you have the coat you know you have coronavirus and and like what is up with that there's yeah. just this just ignorance even if you're in a chinese or asian majority school you are still facing problems of people not understanding it and so we need to educate not just this current generation which we are trying to do all. but all and what we're trying to do in our approach is to do it in appealing to their heart because that's how we're going to change people's minds not by shouting down at them you know it's not worked and so the strategy strategy really needs to be to humanize our stories um i'm actually going to be doing a, a webinar on um, how we why it's important to tell diverse stories um, in order to change the world. Um, that's going to be happening um, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, March 26th, if you're listening to this today. Um, you can find that information on my Facebook page, um, and feel free to join in that conversation at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to reach out to us, please follow us on social media, at LDD Podcast. Um, find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We want to hear from you. Um, and more importantly, we just encourage you to have positive conversations pe with people. You know, when people hear your stories and how this is personally affecting you, and again, sometimes it's from an angry place, but if we can do it from a humanized, um, you know, compassionate stance, I think we're going to get better results because we need allies that are not Asians to help us get the message out that yeah. this is an issue of people perpetually thinking we are the foreigners in this country and not recognizing us as American as anyone else in this country. Yes. Be like Larissa. Don't be like me. <laughs> it's hard. Like I'm not saying I'm perfect. And let, let me let me just tell you, I filter all the hateful thoughts in my head first. Basically, I say... I must be collecting them all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also willing to apologize. I did tweet something that came off as, like, I hate white people. And somebody Ugh. was like, it sounds like you're just ranting on it. Like, not all Americans and all your, your, you know, you're blanking me. Everybody is racist. And I was like, okay, I apologize. Let me rephrase it. And I deleted that tweet and I wrote something else. So, so also... Be open to knowing when you're wrong and when you're being a little harsh and taking that. Because I think if we're expecting people to, to understand when our feelings are hurt for racial reasons, we should understand why other people are hurt for racial reasons as well. So, you know, it's not open season on everyone that's white, okay? <laughs> we want to make Definitely. sure that happens. We have a lot of friends that are white, everybody of every <laughs> ethnic color. Um, we're all about racial reconciliation. We all need to understand each other better so that we can communicate and get, get through this Let's all get through COVID-19 together, okay? Because we're not going to be able to do this apart, even though technically we're all apart right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, we will see you next time on our podcast. Um, and we're trying to brew up some more regular social media um, broadcasts beyond our regular podcast. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, please stay healthy, stay safe, and do something nice for somebody if you can. Virtual. Peace.